Reading is hard. It's frustrating at times. And you walk away from the book feeling like you didn't remember anything or you didn't really understand what was being said. And there's no feeling worse than that. The only way out of that is active reading. If you can develop your skill of active reading, then you will not have that problem again. And you'll be able to be a confident and effective reader. Active reading describes the skill of being able to engage with a book and to really be able to make it sing to you, to remember the ideas, to be critical of what you read and to really understand it on a deeper level. And that is the kind of tool we want in our arsenal so that we can actually walk away from a book satisfied and have a healthy and fruitful reading life. So without further ado, these are five skills to become an active reader. The first skill is asking questions, because at the end of the day, understanding a book is just asking questions and then answering them. Because if you don't knock, you won't find. And if you don't ask, you will not receive. You have to open yourself up to the conversation. It's like a teacher. If you're in class and you don't ask any questions and you don't understand something, then chances are you may not get the answer you're looking for. And it's exactly the same as a book, because in a way authors are just teachers. So if we are not asking the right questions, it's hard to expect the right answers in return. Now, what questions do we ask? The four I usually stick to are, first, what is the book about? Second, what is actually being argued in the book? Third, what is, to what extent is it true? And lastly, what do I do with this information? What's the significance? What of it? And those are the four you'll encounter in Mortimer J. Adler's book, How to Read a Book. And those can be generally applied to all non-fiction and even fiction, but in a different sense. But at the end of the day, the questions you ask depend on you because every reader is different. You're different from me. I'm different from the next reader and we all have our own unique motivations and our unique goals. So really what you ask depends on what you hope to receive and your purpose in reading the book. Maybe you struggle in a particular way or you wish to learn something more precise than the book has to offer. So you really hone your questions to serve you best. And if you can serve yourself with your own questions, then you're gonna have a happier reading life because you actually care about what you're reading. And that is really valuable. So yes, asking questions is the direct pipeline to new understanding. The second step to active reading is to be critical. I can almost guarantee that at some point in your life, you've felt like you cannot criticize a book. You feel that because the author is the author and you're just the reader, you don't have that status and that authority to criticize the book. And that is something that held me back for ages. And it really compromised my, my mental growth and my independence in my thinking. And it might do the same for you because you believe that just because the author is writing the book, that he's somehow this sage, he's somehow higher than you. And in some cases, yes, they will have more understanding and they'll know the topic better than you, but that doesn't make them immune to criticism. At the end of the day, they're just humans. They're just people who wrote. So achieving active reading means surpassing that limiting belief and being able to criticize the book and make judgments on what the author is saying. So your job is to stay awake and alert and look out for these things because you're smart too, even if you don't think so. You have that ability to think critically and sometimes even more so than the author. Now, I don't suggest that you enter a book with this argumentative mindset where you want to pick a bone with every sentence the author has to say, but you need to just be aware and awake. And actually being a critical reader is not only good for active reading, but it allows you to assess yourself. You have to weigh your own arguments against the authors. Does this correlate to what I believe? Is it something that I believed was wrong before? Is it true? Should I change my mind? Are my prejudices or presumptions holding me back? It gives you the chance to assess yourself and like to change your mind and to see this growth in yourself. The third step to active reading is having the will to learn. The will to learn precedes learning itself. And that's the principle I want you to take away today. Because if you don't truly care about a topic, then you won't be interested by it. It's that simple. You'd be surprised because a lot of readers read stuff they don't care about. And I was so guilty of this. I, I read books just because they were recommended or just because it was what everyone else was reading. Where's the independence in that? To have a satisfying and truly fruitful reading life, you need to read things that you want deep down yourself. No one else, just yourself. Because to do something, we have to have a reason. And if the reason is not compelling enough or unique enough, as in personal to us, then we're not going to want to read because what's the point? Everyone's goals are different. So then you have to ask yourself, what is yours? What is your goal in reading? What do you want to achieve in life? Where do you want to be? What does this book that you pick up have to offer you in terms of getting, getting to A to B or changing your mind or anything else, really? Just what are you looking for? And if you can answer those questions, then you have a purpose to read. And that allows you to actually sit up straight and be engaged with the book in the first place. If you're engaged in something that is just meaningless to you, then you're not going to have any joy or motivation to keep going. The fourth step to active reading is to talk with the author. 
And that sounds like an abstract idea at first, but it's so important to having an engaging reading life. I want you to picture something first. You're in a classroom, maybe in college or university or, or just in school, and there's two students. One asks all the questions, they write notes, they clarify things they don't know, and you have the other one. You kind of sit there passively. You don't take notes, You maybe you don't understand something and you, you don't ask the teacher. Who's going to get a better grade in the end? Who's going to walk away with more wisdom? Because it's probably not the passive student. And that's exactly what we're doing here. We're trying to be the active student. Books are teachers. And just because the author's not present to teach us, it's still a lesson. To really grow and benefit from a lesson, you have to be active yourself. You have to receive the, the wisdom properly. It's a dialogue, not a monologue. How can you actually go about doing that? The easiest way is to write notes. Because when you write, you take all the mess that's in your head, the, the messy storm of ideas, and you make them clear. You remove the fog and you put them on paper. And that makes you see them in more clarity. So the next time you read, read with a pencil in hand and write as you go for some that's like a horrible idea it's like i don't want to write my books i had that too but you get used to it and once you start writing you have to write your thoughts what do i think about what i'm reading are there any questions raised you make it easier for yourself by taking wordy paragraphs or ideas that are complicated and because you have a pencil you can rewrite them and just summarize them as you understand them it's a very personal experience but in either case you are arranging your thoughts and receiving wisdom better the fifth and final step to active reading is so important and I love this one because it's such an underrated idea in the world of reading and it's something that can really help you get ahead and understand the book deeply. Number five is drawing conclusions. You summarize what the book is about as a whole and then with each chapter or part, you say what this part was about. And you also say how it relates to the whole, the main idea. But why is that so important? Why do we have to do that anyway? And before I explain more, I want you to picture something and this will show you how important this truly is. So let's say you're talking about books with a friend. You're just having a light-hearted conversation. And you mention the book you're reading because you're really engaged with it and you find it very interesting. Suddenly comes the question out of nowhere. Oh, cool. What's it about? And then you sit there thinking, that's no problem. I read the book just a week ago. But then you try and put it into words and you're kind of left stumped. You think, damn, what actually was the book about? How do I say it in just a paragraph? Even if it sounds so obvious in your head, it's hard to put it into words and you're kind of left stumbling. This last point, drawing conclusions, is exactly how you counter that situation. By summarizing the parts of the book and the book itself, you force yourself really to understand what is the main idea in each part. Every book has an idea, and every chapter has an idea that ties back to the original one somehow. And if you were to summarize each one of those in just a few lines, it forces you to get to grips with it. It forces you to remove all the extra stuff and really see what the, the main point of each chapter was. If you can't do that, then you have missed the point. And you might have to go back and reassess, like, what actually was this chapter about in the first place? Am I missing the main running thread? And that is so powerful because it allows you to link everything you read back to that original premise. And you, everything is viewed in the context of that. So I hope at least one of those steps will help you pick up a book with more confidence. And you can engage with it more deeply. Try all of them, see if any of them resonates with you particularly. And I hope they really help. And of course, thank you for watching.